in the previous session we have discussed about load the isochronos and group avr group and what is the importance of the group and how this uh, the load and the speed what are the requirement of isochronous governor and the group governor for load sharing and these things we were discussed from here onwards that we are going to discuss the procedure of uh, paralleling practically uh, with the uh, smooth operation so as a beginning so as a start this diagram i'll explain here we can see the msb this is the realistic view of uh, main switchboard of a uh, ship uh, top six panels are here the most important part is the synchroscope synchroscope is device which used to determine that the incoming generator and the running generator are fulfilled the principles of synchronization and now the generator is ready to put into the bus bar the, the breaker now you can close so that indication will give you this the, uh, is giving with the synchroscope so here in this gif animation we can see how this synchroscope there are many types of synchroscope this is pointer type some are with led light rotating and the uh, three lamp method two lamp methods in our another the next video i will do uh, describing the principle behind the synchroscope and how it's connected to the bus and to the incoming generator so in this case this device is the similar item here so this position that we call in a clock 12 o'clock position you can see when it, the pointer is come to that position these two lamps are darker and also we can see fast and slow it is written here fast and slow if it is uh, turning clockwise then it means that is fast which means your incoming generator running fast slightly higher speed if it is turning anti clockwise that means the incoming generator is running slow slightly lower speed so what is our requirement slightly higher voltage and slightly higher frequency so that means incoming generator should run slightly higher speed so then the synchroscope will indicate that while turning it in clockwise rotation so then we come to know okay our main two principles are fulfilled voltage and frequency are slightly higher now now only remain point is in phase both generators incoming and running should be in phase to have idea of about that it is recommended here is the 12 o'clock position uh, sorry 11 o'clock position 11 o'clock position 11 o'clock position in 12 o'clock position it says both generators are in phase when the pointer is at 12 o'clock position that is the indication of that uh, both generators are in phase so that is the best place to close the breaker then there will be no heavy circulating current to achieve the exact contact making time at the time of this 12 o'clock position it is recommend to close or initiate the break operation at 11 o'clock position so when the pointer comes here that time we will we can operate the breaker switch this is the breaker switch then the generator will be connected to bus bar without any difficulty or abnormality now i will discuss what are these switches these three switches are the speed uh, control uh, levers by rotating this one clockwise anti clockwise we can lower or uh, increase raise the speed of the generator these red button uh, switches are to close the breaker number one generator number two generator number three generator 
So <coughs> now here is the enlarged view. What will happen? Once we turn this switch to clockwise or anti-clockwise, then there is the electrical signal feed into the generator which is outside in the control room. The generator governor. The top of the governor there is a DC motor. So this DC motor will get the supply and it will compress the spring of a uh, flyweight mechanism which is in the governor then uh, due to that uh, in, uh, increment of force thereafter the output shaft will lower the fuel to the generator in the other hand when we want to increase the fuel that time this motor will get the electrical signal and the internal mechanism will act to increase the fuel to the generator. So a detailed discussion about the governor, its principle and internal that we will discuss on our another video. So it's clear now uh, in practically how we are going to do the uh, synchronization. Now imagine we have already parallel two generators and means uh, incoming generator we have taken to the bus bar just now connected. So there is a graphical, a graphical representation of these two generators. One generator A which is running uh, which was running. So here we can see it is uh, running from 0% to 100% load. So at that moment uh, the running generator was taking full load that means 100% load. So now the system is in this point. So generator B it is carrying 0% load and its load increment from uh, right to left and 100% is here. So at the moment of this connected of incoming generator to the bus bar system speed system uh, frequency is 60 Hertz generator number A is taking 100% load and generator B is taking 0% load. So the graphical representation is like that. So if you want to uh, share some load to generator B, so then we have to increase its speed. We can use our speed control lever as we discussed before to increase its speed. Then this curve will lift up and it's starting to taking load. Let's say we have increased the number to otherwise generator number B speed. So we can see this curve lift up to here. So there is a crossing point generator A, generator B. This is the now system uh, remain state, later state of the system. So generator B is taking its 0% load was here and now it's taking 25% while generator A is taking 75% but in this state we can see the frequency of the system is little higher because we did not adjust the speed of generator number A. Now we have to take down the speed of generator A. Here in this diagram we can see that we have lowered the generator A speed so then it, the crossing point came to here to center both generators sharing equally 50% load and the system frequency is remaining 60 hertz. So by adjusting this, the speed of both generator we can uh, vary the operating point with generator taking how much percentage of the load and also of course it is depending on the droop. Without this true characteristic, then there will be no stable load sharing. So as in this case, load sharing is unstable because no any crossing point. So the load might change from here to here, generator A to B at any time. And then we can see the fluctuation in kilowatt meters as, as the generators are uh, unstable uh, sharing the loads. So it's not good to have isochronous characteristic while load sharing. 
so eventually one generator might fail as it's going to take full load and uh, it may affect the prime mover and all other system including there is a condition with a blackout situation as i explained earlier suppose these two men they are running while carrying a load so if this man tries to run fast what will happen this load trying to drag towards him but as it slow down as he feel the increment of the load himself will get slow down then again the load will come to its center it will not uh, completely shift into one position same as b if b tries to move fast the load try to drag but at the same instant if that man feels that he is having more load then if he slow down so again that will not drag and it will remain in position so the both the system will run at stable the center line the load will be in the center line as the crossing point in the curve so because that these two people person they are slowing down as the load is increasing so in other words when there is a droop the system is getting uh, slow with the load increment of the generator so the system will be always stable so we have discussed about all the everything um, not everything almost uh, many factors uh, regarding load sharing now we are planning to do some practical uh, representation with the simulator basic simulator module uh, for better understanding